same ship, we ain't make those anchors, we ain't plot those gray sights, up since daylight, burdened by the things we try to make right, it's gonna be a late night, so much turmoil, makes my blood boil, Kundalini encore, earth is some broad, dirt is unsore, with more core, tell a story that's some spoil, watch it unfold, stories untold, copyright unsold, books with one spot, ghosts with one soul, they want control, you want control, but we share one goal, we fight one foe, set your front door, and it keeps knocking, but the people kept rocking, yeah, it keeps knocking, but the people kept rocking, yeah, stop, flex, whatever they do, they can't stop, Something amazing happens in the Cairo Desert at the foot of the Great Pyramid. What we believe to be the world's first archaeological dig is established. There are scholars from a wide range of disciplines. Architects, surveyors and others studying the Great Pyramid, first of all measuring it. According to the top Egyptologists, the pyramids were built over 4,000 years ago using the metric system. But according to the world historical narrative, the metric system was discovered by the French in 1798, the same year Napoleon invaded Egypt. Do we assume that this unit of measurement was lost and never used again for 4,000 years? Or did the French rediscover the system and take credit for the creation? Nonetheless, the chronological and historical parallels between Napoleon's invasion of Egypt and the French and British participation of the Louisiana Purchase are un- Deniable. Some evidence suggests Joseph may have even declined an offer to sit on the throne of Mexico, which was then seeking independence from Spain. Wow, you've never heard about Joseph Bonaparte, but he obviously was the man. He was about to be the first fresh, he was about to be a, I don't know the first, I, I don't know, I don't really know Mexican history like that, but I think he was about to be the first French Mexican president, which would have been crazy for 1820. A French Mexican president. You see how these countries are trading lands? You see, you see what's going on here? For a hundred years, the French controlled that area in the middle of America and Napoleon goes to Egypt and all of a sudden he gains all of this land after he wins in Egypt. The Nile is a stream, not a specific river, but the river of today is a river that many people think is somehow mentioned as a specific river in the Bible. It is not. The Nile is a Greek translation that changed the word Nile into a proper noun in which it is abundantly clear it is not. In occasion after occasion, the word Nile was changed from its true form and meaning. An initial mention of a river associated with Egypt in Genesis is in Genesis 15:18 when Abram is given through covenant the land in its most simple context, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, neither of which is the Nile, because as we have already established, the Nile is an improper noun. Again, we look at Isaiah chapter 19 in multiple translations and contexts
the mouth of the Nile is the Egyptian Sea. This major contradiction in biblical geography cannot be explained away by just changing the root meaning of the word Nile from an improper noun to a proper noun. Any biblical scholar will tell you that this is the same river mentioned by name throughout the Greek translations of scripture. But that same scholar cannot properly reconcile the problem with its literal inconsistencies. Most biblical scholars put the Sea of Egypt as the Red Sea. In doing this, they must be creative in order to make these landmarks fit into their proposed geographical templates. What ultimately happens is the truth spirals down the open air latrine of heathenistic nonsense. In order for this nonsense to fit their templates, words, names, and meanings must be translated completely out of context. For example, if most academic scholars put the Egyptian Sea as the Red Sea, then where is the Red Sea? How does one account for that? Even by naming the sea different names, one is still left with a major hole in their theory. The mouth of the Nile isn't at the Red Sea either. So whichever body of water they use to indicate as the Egyptian Sea, neither fits. More evidence, their information is manufactured to promote false geography. The mouth of the Nile is the Mediterranean Sea, which is represented by neither the Red Sea or the Mediterranean. According to scholars, the Mediterranean Sea was labeled as the Great Sea, recognized as the largest body of water on Earth. This is the central part of their deception, the world map. The only existing manuscripts remaining from anything chronologically close to antiquity are products manipulated and refabricated from the hands of Greco-Roman families. Why would classical Egyptian history only be explored and taught? through the lens of non-Egyptians? Or were these Greco-Romans also Egyptians as well? To understand this, we must work backwards, starting with present day and showing the direct correlation from the past to the present. In order to do this, we will begin with the field of Egyptology and the gatekeepers who uphold the status quo. Whoa, 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 whoa. To the Great Escape of 2020. There's more room. When you're ready, 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 ready.